As you may recall, in the last video we painted this FJ-43 pickup, which came with the SPG-9 recoilless gun. So, in today's video, we'll show you how we can give this vehicle a crew. And for that, we'll use this street fighting Palestinian set. We have chosen the figure that is alerting his companion of danger and holding an AK-47 in his hand. As you can see, the modeling is very good and only a few retouches will be needed to turn it into a spectacular figure. When it comes to working on resin models, we should keep in mind the tools that we are going to use, as they are different to what we would use if the figures were made of plastic. First of all, we might need some putty. We will glue the model with cyanoacrylate glue. Then we'll of course need a cutter to remove mold lines and a plier cutting tool to separate the pieces from the sprue. We'll start by separating the pieces from the sprue and as you can see we are trying to cut as far from the piece as possible. After we have done this, we will remove as much of the support resin as we can without damaging the piece. Next, we'll go over it with a cutter. When working with small and thin pieces, such as the AK-47 rifle, we must be very careful with how much strength we use. So keep this in mind when you separate the piece from the supports. Here you can see how we are removing this excess that's left on the piece using the cutter for this. We must be very careful when handling resin, as one of its characteristics is its fragility, which is especially true for the small pieces like these ones. If you manage to damage any of the pieces, don't worry, you can unite them again with some cyanoacrylate glue. Another recommendation to keep in mind. Wash your resin figures with some lukewarm water and soap before starting with the assembly and painting. Notice how we left a piece of support below the boot. This is so that we can work with the figure more easily. For the next step, we'll need the cyanoacrylate glue as it's time to glue one of the arms. This specific one won't complicate the painting process. Later on, you'll see that we've left the other arm separate so that we can reach all the parts of the figure without any complication. To glue the figure, we only need to keep it in the desired position for a couple of seconds. It's convenient to try out the position before using the glue, this way we prevent any error. Afterwards, we can start priming the figure, for which we'll use the third generation acrylic primer, specifically the black primer. As you can see, we're not trying to cover the entire surface of the figure in one go. Instead, we work slowly and gradually until the figure is covered completely. This is to prevent accumulation of paint resulting in undesired effects. Next, we'll start painting the jacket. The first color we'll use is extra dark green, and we apply it with an airbrush to proceed with the painting process more quickly. As you can see, this base color is very dark and we'll work on increasing the lights gradually. Remember to paint all the parts and pieces that should be the same color. After we have finished with this step, we'll start painting the jeans using strong dark blue and dark Prussian blue. For this we'll use very diluted coats of paint. Be very careful when working on the jeans and try not to stain the jacket. However, if it happens, you don't really need to worry about it too much, as it can be fixed quite easily since we are still in a very initial phase of the painting process. Remember that if you need to speed up the drying time, you can use a hairdryer. For the base coat of the chest rig, we will use canvas tone mixed with black. Although you can use practically any color since the Chicom chest rig is made in many different colors. So pick the one you like best. We chose this one so there would be more contrast between the jacket and the chest rig. We'll start to lighten it up with canvas tone. 
The method we follow for painting figures is to always begin in the center and then go outwards. So we'll finish this part completely before moving on to the jacket and afterwards the jeans. We apply the brush strokes only on the most prominent protruding areas of the chest rig. This way we create the illusion of there being shadow. To create an even more extreme light, I'll use buff mixed with canvas tone. This time the lines we make with the brush will be irregular as our goal is to imitate textile and make it seem that the threads are visible. This is a very easy way to create what we can call textile texture. If the difference in tone seems too extreme to you, you can make the transition smoother and more unified by applying a glaze with a medium tone. In this case, it wasn't necessary as we liked the obtained result. As you can see, we can play with the lights and shadows and create interesting effects without needing to use shades, which are so commonly used. Keep in mind that we should use yellow to light up green color. We will use a very strong yellow for this, laser yellow. First, we'll try it out on the shoulder area. We will proceed to apply this color, very diluted, in the same way as we did on the vest. We'll let the paint in the trial area dry and afterwards, if we're happy with the results, we can apply it all over the jacket. This is the result. A very subtle highlight. If you want to continue increasing the lights, you only need to add more laser yellow to the mixture. And with each phase, we reduce the application area. Doing it like this, we can imitate lights that would affect an object in real life. With this last step, we'll have finished the fighter's jacket. Let's move on to the jeans. We'll return to our previous mixture, dark Prussian blue and strong dark blue. In this case, we'll add more of the lighter tone to the mixture. And we can begin to apply glaze all over the surface. Next, with Ducat Blue and Dark Prussian Blue will provide the jeans with their characteristic blue color. We are working with a very diluted paint on the jeans because we want the details, the undertones of the previous color to still be visible. We don't want a very saturated blue color. Moreover, observe how we are applying this step only on the part of the jeans where most light would hit, ignoring the lower part of the jeans as much as possible. When this coat has dried, we'll go back to the previous mixture of dark Prussian blue and Ducat blue. This time, though, we'll be adding more of the Ducat blue paint to the mixture. The application method is similar to what we did on the vest. We paint small random lines to imitate the textile texture that we talked about earlier. Keep in mind that these coats must be applied very diluted, otherwise the effect could appear unrealistic. If you do overdo it though, you can apply glaze all over the jeans using a medium tone. To get an idea of how this glazing that we're talking about works, we'll now apply a very extreme light using the pure Ducat Blue color. We're applying it in areas that will receive the most light, such as the thigh area, the knee area. See how the effect is too exaggerated? You can see here how this blue color is too intense if compared with the blue that surrounds it. The jump from one tone to the next is too abrupt. Compare it to the jacket or the vest, for example, where the colors are more faded and matte. So what we'll do now is to apply glaze over the entire jeans using dark Prussian blue. You'll see that once dry, all the different tones will come together and the pair of jeans will appear much more realistic. In the next step, we'll start painting the face using Chak Kashoke as the base color. 
will attempt to cover the entire surface of the face with this color, leaving only the eyes black. If you want to learn more about painting skin, we recommend you to take a look at the AK Learning series number 6 that is dedicated entirely to how to paint flesh and skin. We have found it very helpful. Continuing with the painting process, we'll mix together Chaka Shoka from before with a little bit of sunny skin tone. We'll apply this mixture over the protruding areas of the face as well as hands. We'll leave some of the previous color visible, so that we can create the illusion of light and shadow. For the eyes, we'll need grimy grey for the white layer of the eye, the sclera, and burnt umber for the iris. Next, we'll paint the scarf on the waist of the figure using black red. This will be the base coat. Be very careful when painting these last few steps, so that you don't stain the adjacent areas. Now we'll lighten up the scarf with a mixture of black red and matte red. The technique is the same that we saw previously. You can see that we play around with contrast to provide our figure with more visual richness. We have a light vest with a dark jacket and then a red scarf in contrast with the blue jeans. When it comes to painting white colors, this graphite paint will provide the perfect base. And so we'll apply it over the Arab headdress Kafiya. Like we said before, be careful when painting this base color at this point of the process to avoid any error that could damage your previous work. We'll use the same paint on the sole of the sneakers and on the logo part that you'll surely recognize. If we want to highlight this color a little, we just need to add some grimy gray. Keep in mind not to overdo it using pure white color, as that could give us results that appear fake. So to lighten up this mixture of graphite and grimy gray that we have applied, just add more grimy gray. Save the pure white color for that shine or final touch of white. Now, finally, and after we have highlighted the headdress with white, we'll try to recreate the famous pattern of the Scafia scarves. For this step, we'll use dirty red. This is the moment when you'll need to play around with the distance and keep in mind that the figures are meant to be looked at from a certain distance, so you don't need to do this perfectly. The technique we've used is to draw many dots over the cloth. Finally, we've reached the point of moving on to the AK-47. We'll apply a base coat of black paint with a brush. This will be done over the entire surface, so we need to do it in parts, as due to its size it would be impossible to hold it in a way that would allow us to paint it all at once. After we've painted it in its entirety and let the base coat dry, we'll apply gun metal with some black using the dry brush technique. We can use this dry brush number 2 from Abteilung 502. As you can see, this mixture is quite dark and so we could exaggerate the lights a little more, adding some more gun metal to the mixture. As for the base coat for the wooden part, we found that Waffen Brown adapts perfectly to the prototypical color of this kind of Soviet weapons. And although it seems that we're going to paint the butt, in the end we decided to cut it off to give the weapon a more guerrilla look. So after we've put all the pieces together, here you can see the final result of this figure. We hope you liked the result, 
and we'll see you in the next video.